Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, welcome. Just waiting for this all to load and a few of you to join. Hello, nice to see you. Waving at you. I hope you are having a good start to your day, wherever you may be joining us from. Hello, hello. Um, my name's Kirsten. I am Community Relations Specialist for TK, Timberline Knowles. And we are a treatment center for women and adolescent girls um, located outside of Chicago in Illinois. And we are here on the IG almost every week talking about mental health issues. Um, we get our clinicians and staff on here quite a bit, as well as TK alumni, um, advocates in the field, and we are always really excited to include you in the conversation as well. So that is just my little encouragement to all of you who are joining us to be a part of the conversation if you want. Um, of course, you can always just sit there and watch. Um, at, but if you want to just pop in, say hello, let us know where you're signing in from, ask a question, um, share some of your own insights in recovery. We always love that. So feel free to dive in at any time. So I'm going to bring on our guest. It is um, Reverend Dr. Liz Holford. She is the chaplain at TK. And we're going to be talking about spiritual love today. Big topic, but uh, I think we're going to hopefully have some uplifting and encouraging things to offer you today. And uh, it's going to be a good one. So I'm going Hello. Hello. Hey. Good to see you. <laughs> good, good to see you too. Did I say it right? Is it Reverend Doctor or is it Dr. Reverend? <laughs> It's Reverend Doctor, yeah. It starts off with the Rev, so yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, cool. Well, for everyone who is here and has joined this show before, um, they know that you are very kind to join us. Um, a couple times a year, you've been on almost once a month. Anyway, you're a frequent guest, um, and so mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> very much. Um, and whenever we have you on, we talk about spiritual things. And um, mm -hmm. This month is, there's a lot going on this month. So last week was Valentine's Day. And mm -hmm. then this week is National Eating Disorders Awareness Week, um, which obviously there's a lot of conversation about self-love and body love and all of these things. Love is a big topic. And uh, so I wanted to get you on to, to talk about spiritual love, because I think it can be talked about a lot, but a very abstract concept as well for people to understand. So first of all, how does spiritual love, whether as a part of a faith journey or not, how is that different from like self-love or body love? So when we talk about spiritual things, we're talking about how we are interconnected with one another, with the world around us, meaning nature, creation, and also how we are connected to ourselves and to our higher powers, right? So spirituality is about this connection that happens that um, may be understood in terms of religious connection, but it also may be understood in terms of the spiritual world outside of religion. So a lot of times people have in their minds that spirituality and religion are the same thing. Uh, we discussed this at uh, in one of our spirituality groups on campus. And uh, if people have a positive understanding of religion, they're more likely to see spirituality and religion as the same thing. If they have a negative understanding of religion, they're more likely to see it as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we separate it out and say that spirituality and religion are similar but different, then it becomes about how we connect with something beyond ourselves outside of the understanding of religion and everything. And so when we make those connections, we have to learn how to see love as something that is overwhelming and guiding at the same time. Mm. So um, a lot of times people do find love to be their higher power. 
how that works out is that people see love as this guiding principle, this universally organizing understanding of how the world uh, was formed, how it functions, and what its goals are. And so when we see love in the spiritual sense, it becomes something much bigger, and um, it becomes something that we can participate in um, and that we can have relationship with and work with in a lot of different levels. So I, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but... <laughs> yeah, actually, I've never heard it explained like that, but I love that. I love how you said overwhelming and guiding at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That take, uh, that, that'll that take me like an hour to two on. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, and the other ways that we understand love is that it can be a disposition. It can be a way of feeling and sensing the world around ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be an emotion, right? So we, as we just celebrated um, Valentine's Day, Right. We have the feeling of love. Right. And so we talk about um, whether there's such a thing as um, uh, falling in love or uh, what do we call it? Uh, love at first sight. Right. Mm. So, you know, love is this um, emotion that we can feel and it's this instant grasping on to someone or something else. And it's also an experience. Right. So the experience of love uh, has a way of transforming us and changing us. Um, and I first want to say also that it's natural to love. We all love as human beings. Um, what we love varies and who we love varies, but we all love. That's a universal principle. Um, sometimes we apply that um, to animals as well, although some of that may be about um, our projection onto them. But for instance, this morning, I saw a uh, picture of a mama lion and her cub walking and the li baby lion's looking up at the mom. And it, everyone, the post is like, love happens or something like that. And I'm like, huh. I can see the love there. I don't necessarily know if the lion is feeling that, <laughs> <laughs> that moment, or what the lion wanted. <laughs> yeah. But um, so like... Um, Spiritual love, love that transcends, that goes beyond the boundaries of our emotions, of our experiences, um, helps to make us feel something about ourselves and the world around us. And it helps us to put ourselves in right perspective and right order with the world that we live in. Mm, I love that. Um, how do we help relate this to, or especially, you know, as I mean, a clinician as a spiritual guide yourself. Um, how do we help look at love in a spiritual sense if someone has, like, let's say, been the victim of abuse or trauma where love has been so distorted? Um, mm -hmm. And so someone might be afraid of particularly receiving love, that that might be a really difficult concept to grasp. Yeah, and I think that, I think that that's real and it happens a lot. Um, we really struggle with this idea of love hurting, right? And I'm not sure if love hurts. Um, so there's a song called Love Hurts by <laughs> Nazareth, but every time I hear that phrase, I think of it. Um, and love is not meant to hurt. And so when we have these relationships that are toxic, that are traumatic, we get that feeling of hurt. And then that makes me question whether that's really love, yeah. whether people who do those things are actually acting in love or if it is some distortion yeah. that is going on. And then how we interpret that, even as people hurt us and they say things about love to us, um, we really have to work hard to overcome the message that we receive and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we define love as something that doesn't hurt, that love do is not meant to hurt us, it, that love is meant to put us in right relationship with others and to build community and to build a sense of self, then we can 
start to differentiate when we hear messages mm -hmm. that say, I love you for who you are versus I love you because of what you do, mm -hmm. because of how you perform, because of how you look, mm -hmm. right? So figuring out what real love says versus what um, the distortions and the lies about love say to us is of infinite importance. Mm, that's so good. And how does someone distinguish, this is just something that popped into my head as you were speaking, between, because some people can love us in a way that's selfish or not really giving. And so it might feel like love in the moment, but it's really not. And this is outside of the more traumatic or abusive mm -hmm. of love. But how, but we all crave feeling loved. So it might mm -hmm. feel good. How do we distinguish with others relationships that we might be in between a healthy kind of love that we're receiving um, versus something that is truly self-sacrificing love? Right. Um, so I think it takes time and awareness of what it is that we actually need and want, right? So love is about desire on some level, right? The desire to be seen, the desire to be heard, the desire to be known for who we really are, right? Overcoming shame yep. in that way. And um, it is true that we all have different love languages, right? That get like Gary Chapman teaches in his book, right? That there are always different ways that we receive love and that we give it back, right? And so when we're in relationship with someone else, it's important to recognize when, um, uh, when we're experiencing something that we need versus something that the other person needs to give themselves and everything. And so um, I think it takes a little self-understanding and understanding of the other person, uh, understanding where we want the relationship to go in some level, right? And um, if there is a sense of how this person is loving me is not meeting my needs, is not uplifting my soul in some ways, then I think it's okay to recognize that and decide what we need to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, at the same time, to recognize that sometimes um, we're not going to be seeing eye to eye with our partners in life. Sometimes those things we need to give each other grace and we need to give each other kindness too. Right. Um, and so part of one of the things about this pandemic and everything is that we've been forced to be in relationship with other people all the time, but not just other people, the people that we're supposed to care about the most yeah. in our lives. Yeah. And then we start to realize what we think about them, what we think about ourselves and everything. And so figuring out how we're going to um, balance how we feel and what we need and what we want with the other person. Um, it takes a lot of effort, right? And it takes a lot of thought. Um, I, uh, I have a, a friend who is married to someone and she was talking the other day about how they're in constant communication with each other and going back and forth and everything. And I just thought to myself, that sounds exhausting, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's very healthy for them. It's how they show love to each other and it's how they stay connected and everything. Mm, that's really cool. Thank you for that. That's very helpful. Um, and also very encouraging if anyone is listening to this and is having a difficult time in some relationships or being around the same person 24 seven, you know, that um, that's not abnormal, that that <laughs> is a big shift that's taken place and some relearning is definitely required, even if you've been married or with someone for a very long time. Um, so I'd like to start to transition toward the end here by talking about how we receive spiritual love, because mm -hmm. I know just one of the things in my own faith journey that has had its ups and downs has been like, how do I give myself grace or how do I accept grace from God and mm -hmm. realize that I really am loved. There's nothing that I can do to earn God's love. I already have it. And then therefore there's nothing I can do to lose it. That's really, that's really tough. So what as our spiritual guide, as our chaplain here, <laughs> um, how can you encourage us that 
we are able to accept that grace. We are worthy of accepting spiritual love because that can be very, very challenging. It is challenging. And it's something that people wrestle with a lot because we live in a culture that values um, achievement and values effort, right? Um, and so I think that accepting grace into our lives involves being open to the possibility that we are in fact wrong. We are wrong in our self narrative about ourselves that we don't live up to something or that we're not enough, right? Um, the media will constantly tell us that as women, as mothers, as human beings, we are falling short in one way or another. And even in this week of um, eating disorder awareness, we find this idea that um, people are incredibly harsh on their bodies and have the feeling that they're not good enough and that if they can control and transform themselves in some way, they're going to achieve the perfection or they're going to achieve what they've longed for in their lives, which is that love and grace. Um, and yet recognizing that the love of God is a given. It's there in, I mean, in speaking in Christian terms specifically, it's there in the creation story. It's why God created. And that's one of the beautiful things about the creation story in Christianity, even as we argue about literalism and everything, the underlying message that God would create and not just create for his own selfish reasons, but create for love, right? Mm -hmm. The whole garden is a place of love, of connection, of um, meaning and purpose to be with one another, right? Yeah. Um, and that transcends throughout all of scripture, the idea that we are loved for who we are, not because we can achieve, because in reality, we can't achieve. We can't do it. We're never going to make it. And yet we're loved first. And therefore we are drawn closer to one another and closer to ourselves. Um, so love and grace go hand in hand. If we have grace, then we have love. If we have love, then we have grace. And then we even have mercy, right? Recognizing that we're not deserving of what we have and yet appreciating it and loving it um, as we live into it and as we experience it in our lives. Um, so there's this, uh, I mean, like, so there's this, um, this image that I really love that always, helps me to feel this connection to love is the idea. It comes from these people called the desert fathers who lived around the fourth century in places like Egypt and Ethiopia and in Gaza and places like that, who were monastic people who would go out into the desert and live um, these simple lives and everything. But one image that comes up is this idea that of a wheel. And so the, at the center of the wheel is God and going out from the wheel are um, spokes that lead out to the outer rim. And so if we imagine ourselves as on that rim, as we journey through life on those spokes towards the center, we get closer to one another and we get closer to God. Ah. So this journey of life, this journey of love is about coming closer to one another as we get closer to God as well. That is cool. That is a really great image. Um, I, I love that. Um, so many good things. Just one thing I want to highlight, underline, circle that you said is being open to the possibility <laughs> <laughs> that you are wrong about the narrative that you that you have about yourself and I just love that because the for anyone else who struggled with the voice of self-criticism or self-judgment and if anyone is was brought up in a very strict religious tradition that, that that may be a part of that that it can be say well I can't just snap my fingers and be like oh okay I accept grace you know mm -hmm. but it can start with opening the door of possibility that that might be even just the first step to question okay I could be wrong about this. And that starts a process that can lead to a greater acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That question of what if, what if I am wrong? And what if that story of me being loved is actually right? Or what if there's more to what I see and experience than what 
I'm seeing and experiencing in this moment, right? And um, curiosity, uh, you know, we have that phrase, curiosity killed the cat. And yet curiosity is the thing that helps us to grow. It's the thing that helps us to wonder. And um, when we wonder, we're able to find answers. We're able to find the right questions that lead us into these places of freedom of experience, freedom of connection, and love itself, right? Because it's this openness that's available to us all. Mm, that's so cool. Um, that's such a wonderful place to end. <laughs> that I had a, one or two other questions for you, but that is a really nice way, and I think something really lovely to leave people with. Lovely, <laughs> no. Problem. Um, so, Liz, just last question I'll ask you, how are things on campus? And um, my classic end of interview question, what is bringing you joy right now? Uh, things are good on campus. Um, we uh, survived the Omicron season. So, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and uh, we have some new therapists joining us and everything. And um we're really working hard to strengthen the program, strengthen the healing that happens and to help people live their meaningful lives. And so that's a wonderful thing. Things are going well for campus. Awesome. Um, and then uh, in my life, what's giving me joy is um, we've been planning our spring break trip to Hawaii. So that's a fun time for the family and everything. So, wow. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Are you going in March, April? When yes. Break March. March. End of March. Yeah. So it's just looking forward to being on a beach and a pretty beach and everything. And yeah, getting outdoors and enjoying some warmth. Also, uh, there's 26 days till spring. So that's a blessing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for giving us the countdown. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz. I really appreciate your thoughts and your wisdom on this and guiding us very articulately through a very deep and challenging topic. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for, um, you know, thinking about love. And I hope that everyone listening and everything feels a sense of pure love for themselves and for the people in their lives and for their higher power. Amen, sister. Cool. All right. Well, happy National Eating Disorders Awareness Week to all of you out there who are in recovery, have recovered, are pursuing recovery. As just my little PSA for this week, I want to encourage you, if you are thinking about getting treatment, calling someone, reaching out for help, this is your sign. Do it. You are worth it. Recovery is worth it. And full recovery is possible. There is hope and you are not alone. So if someone else in your life needs to hear this message, please send them this video. That's why we do this. Um, but we love you. We're here for you at Timberline Knowles, but just reach out for help. You're worthy of it. You deserve it and full recovery is possible, okay? All right. <laughs> Wishing you a wonderful rest of your day, Liz. Bye and good night. Thank you. Bye.